Darling, it's all right. My poor neurotic darling. of glorious beach, 15 miles from the nearest town. Hmm, that should suit her. Suit me too. Sir? 15 miles from the nearest town, from the nearest shop. My wife thinks she's married to a police commissioner when she gets near a shop. Compulsive buyer. But 15 miles from the nearest town. Oh, all shopping facilities within the hotel itself. Well, it's lucky I can't afford this whole day. No, it'll have to be somewhere else. Oh, the Sahara Desert. How many shops out there? It's a feature of the place. No, it'll have to be the same place as last year. Spain. I like Spain. Plenty of authority in Spain. In evidence, too. You don't only know it's being policed, you can see it. It's run like a tight ship. Yes. Just who do you think you are? I don't think, Inspector. I know. Brooke? Arthur Brooke? Superintendent? Oh, sorry, sir. Communication would seem to be somewhat lax in this department. Well, I've heard of you, of course, sir. It's just that I've never had the, uh, the pleasure of meeting you before. Well, I'm not talking about me, Inspector. I'm talking about Garrard and Filton. Oh. They're out. Paul! 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 Radio control established in that room. Keep one wavelength exclusively for this operation. Inform all radio cars. I want a list of all available men. A deployment roster. And Sergeant will have to get a better scale map than this, you know. I want every tree and every pathway to be clearly defined. Oh, and when you've done that, Sergeant, you might set me up a bed in a back room somewhere, would you? Hello? Yes? When? You sure? All right, thank you. Like one of those films. One of what films? Those films. Where somebody panics, turns a perfectly good organization on its head, and disrupts the whole system. Panic, eh? Well, I think so. All right, it's Gara and Filton. 
with just two men. Well, just exactly how would you go about it, Inspector? The usual way. Send out a call to all men, surround the area, find the criminals, move in, make an arrest? Yes. I suppose you'd like to make the arrest yourself. Would you get your picture in the papers? This is my division. Yes, yes. In fact, I couldn't agree more with you, Inspector. You're absolutely right. In fact, I'm glad you volunteered. But we'll be fine, Garrard. You can go out and bring him in. But be very careful of the gun, won't you? Gun? Yes, they've stolen a double-barreled shotgun. And it's now in the hands of Mr. Garrard. As you know, Inspector, he's a certified psychopath. Now, I don't want to panic you, Inspector, but from this moment on, the whole community's at risk. Where to, Miss? Spearbury. Spearbury. I'm sure they're still in the same neighborhood, sir. It's just a question of flushing them out. That's why I'm making the request. So we're not just talking about any prisoner, we're talking about Garrard, who's a psychopath. Yes, I know he's got Filton with him. Filton is small fry, but Garrard is not. He's a killer. He's got absolutely nothing to lose, and he's got a gun. But I can't say... Yes, sir. Thank you. He's agreed. He can arm the men. You're drinking too much. I need a drink. A pill would be more sedating. It's your doctor, Alex. Doctor. And the man who loves you very much. Henry, I'm worried about you. You're very close to cracking up. No. After all this time, I know you. I know you best. Did you do everything up there? Oh, yes, all the little chores attended to. All the domestic chores. Isn't that what I promised you? There'll be no worries on your shoulders. Trust me. And later tonight... Who can that be? Well, we're not expecting anyone, are we? So the best thing is to answer it and find out. But... Take one. Who else is in the house? No one. I said, who else? Nobody. That's good. That's nice. As long as we do as they say, they won't harm us. Oh, well, that's really clever. Hey? He's a mind reader. Check the house. It's not that I don't trust you. My motto is trust everyone. But cut the cards. Who are you? What do you want? His name is Gard. Garrard. The name is Garrard. 
And the other one is Filton. You've been listening to your radio. That's right, we're famous. I should have said notorious. Well, whatever. The thing is, people are talking about us. How did you know I was Garrard? I haven't had time to put out a picture yet. It was a description. Oh. Tall, dark, and handsome. Now, they can't have slipped through the net. Garrard and Filton are on foot. They can't have had more than a ten minute start. Most of the roadblocks were established within twenty minutes. Fifteen, some of them. That's right. Nevertheless, there's not been a single report of a sighting. Nevertheless, they are in there somewhere, Inspector. Those roadblocks are tying up a number of my men, Superintendent. Things are getting difficult. Yes, and they're going to get a downside. More difficult, aren't they? A few policemen are going to go without leave. A few lucky motorists are going to go without being booked. No, Inspector, I'm sorry. They're still in there. Garrard and Filton, hiding out, waiting. They're in there somewhere. I won't have a single roadblock lifted. I want more men. More men? Yes, I want to double up on some of those roadblocks. Double up? Inspector, I want every single thing and every single person checked and rechecked. I don't want as much as a mouse scurrying out of that area. Or in. Your countryside is really something. Yes, miss. Except when the weather turns bad. They say around these parts, if you can see the skyline, it's gonna rain. And if you can't see it, <laughs> it is raining. <laughs> Oh, it looks as if we're going to have some rain today, too. Good day, sir. What's wrong? Just a routine check. Routine? Where are you heading? Lady's going to Spearbury. What's all this about? Spearbury. Don't stop for anyone, sir. That's all. Hitchhikers, anyone. Don't stop. Maybe if I ask, what is going on? A couple of convicts have escaped, miss. <laughs> Two hoods on the lamp. I understood convicts. Are they dangerous? Oh, I doubt if they're in the area anyway. Probably miles away by now. Don't stop for anyone, sir. That's all. Yes, I know, miss. Us British coffers are wonderful. turn back, miss. It took three months to arrange this interview with the Hensons. I can't give it up now. All right. Hey. Where are you? <laughs> it's all right. There's no one else here. That's nice. That's a good start. You were telling the truth then, Mr. Uh... Mr. Dr. Dr. Henson. Oh! Doctor, eh? Oh, that could come in handy. We might be here some time. And I've... I've got this terrible pain in, in my big toe. I've had it ever since <laughs> I was a kid. Perhaps you could advise me on that. We'll do whatever you say. Yes, of course you will. <laughs> Car, in the garage? Yes, in the garage with a full tank of petrol. Take it, take it and go. We don't want it. Not just yet, anyway. You reckon you can get it working, then? Yeah. Fix it up with the car battery. Well, go on, then. Get it working. Keep your head down out there. <laughs> your wife looks pale. Why don't you sit down, Mrs. Henson? Sit down.
when Filton gets back, we will make you really comfortable, Mrs. Henson. Keep yourself in good shape then, Doctor. Hey, No flab. Of course, I'm probably a little bit heavier than you, but there's not much difference. You know, one of the features of prison life is the absence of the kind of luxury that a man of my background appreciates. You know what I mean? Hmm? Well-cut suit, the snap of cuff, the feel of linen against the skin. Uh, you do have a linen shirt. Well, when Fulton gets back, we will trot along to your wardrobe and sort out some gear. The linen shirt, I insist upon, and a silk tie. Ah, uh, nothing too bold. You see how innocuous I am? I could demand anything. But all I ask is the feel of something nice against my skin. Your patient, then, Henson, you said. Only Henson I know in these parts is Dr. Henson, heart specialist. Oh, no, it's Mrs. Henson I'm going to see. Oh, Mrs. Henson. Oh, I've driven her once. She comes from a title family, you know. Very wealthy. That's why I'm going to see her. I'm a journalist. Mrs. Henson has one of the finest collections of posters in the world. I'm going to do a feature on them. Posters? Theatrical, advertising. Oh, posters. The valuable bits of paper. Very. Some of the really early ones are priceless. But I expect she keeps those safely locked away. Don't worry, Doc. I told you we'd make your wife comfortable. I trust you. I also told you I trusted you, but you see, she is my insurance. Because while you and me are downstairs relaxing or uh, talking about the weather, or politics, or that big toe of mine. She'll be up here, with Filton looking after her. And he'll do that very well, won't you, Filton? For God's uh, sake! Uh, told you to fix that radio. If she's harmed... She will be fine. Just as long as you do what you are told. Move. Filton will be looking after her. All the time. I'll look after you, Mrs. Henson. That's why I was inside, for looking after the ladies. <laughs> Perhaps a bit too well. You expecting any callers, Doc? No. I'll ask you again. And this time, think about it. Are you expecting any callers? I'm expecting no one. What about the unexpected ones? Mrs. Smith sprains her ankle. Little Johnny gets a tummy ache. You're a doctor, aren't you? I'm not that kind of doctor. How many kinds are there? I'm a specialist. In keeping your nose clean? Go on. That's good, though. That you're not expecting anyone. That could have been awkward. I'd feel responsible if anything happened to you, miss. I'm sure. And nothing's going to happen to either of us, as long as you keep your eyes on the road. Did I find them? I mean, there's nothing there. Nothing yeah, I, yeah, I know the disposition of all those cars. I'll be in the upstairs office. It's a bit too crowded in here. Thank you. 
room enough for the both of us, so I'll be upstairs if I'm needed. He doesn't really understand his kind, sir. Not enough time in the field. It's all uh, administration, bookwork. Doesn't understand a situation like this, not like you and me, sir. I thought you had some experience behind you, Sergeant. Well, I do, sir. Nineteen years on the force. Hasn't taught you very much, has it? Now, his kind is made up to inspector. Because, according to the book, his kind is superior to your kind, Sergeant. Come in. Now, it's perfectly true that I talked him down. But then you see, I've worked very hard. They've made me up to superintendent. Which gives me the right, the privilege, and sometimes the pleasure to step on people who are below me. But I don't make any mistakes, Sergeant. I don't underestimate people. Now, I have invited your inspector to go in alone and disarm Garrard. You don't think for one moment that he wouldn't do it, do you? Well, do you? No, sir. Well, of course he'd go in. Because sometimes the dangerous, difficult, unpleasant jobs fall to his lot. In the way they fall to yours, Sergeant, or to mine. Yes, sir. Now, in future, when you want to knock a superior officer, do it for his benefit, not for mine. Oh, come on, get on with it. I told you to stay with the girl. Go on. Come on, Doc. On your feet. And get it right. Go on. Sorry to trouble you, sir. Yes? What is it? Have you been watching television or listening to the radio, sir? No, I've been working, as a matter of fact. Why? Routine check, sir. A couple of bad lads have escaped. There's a chance they may be in the area. No need to be alarmed, of course. As I said, just routine. We're calling on every house in the neighbourhood, just in case anyone's seen anything suspicious. I, I've seen nothing. I've been working. <coughs> well, if you do see or hear anything... Yes, of course. I'll, I'll let you know. Meanwhile, if you don't mind, we'll take a quick look around the grounds. Well, do whatever you like, but I'm sure you won't find anything. <coughs> Oh, it's the kids. <gasps> Darling, do try to keep them quiet. My wife's supposed to be reading to them, improving their minds. It sounds as if she's reading them horror stories. <laughs> yeah, well, gentlemen, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm... Well, uh, thanks for your trouble, sir. And don't forget, if you see or hear anything... Yes, of course. I, I'll call you at once. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. But she didn't think she'd punish. Fine. One moment I was going to kill you. The next I was proud of you. But your wife, oh no, she didn't do so good. But she was hysterical, under stress. Worse. She was under Filton's eye. Filton? Filton! Oh, 
Hilton. Yeah? Everything all right up there? Yeah, she's all right. She pulled a gag off. That's good. Come down here. Garage. Come down. You. You made a mistake. Look, I promise you. That could have been a fatal mistake. I should use your face for a punch bag, shouldn't I? Yeah. Speak up, Phil. I can't hear you. Yes. Yes, I should what? Use my face for a punch bag. Come on, then. Come on, give us a face. It's all right. <laughs> I was only kidding. <laughs> oh. Come on, Felton, get up. Come fix that radio. Felton, I just taught you a lesson that might, it might, one day, keep you alive. You ought to say thank you. Felton. Thanks. That's all right. Before you go, cop hold of this. You got a workbench? In, in the garage. Cut the barrels down. I'll end up. It's just you and me, in it? Fancy your chances? Do you want to take me on? Hey? No. You're not the type, are you? But I bet you're ill with women and kids, hey? Well, seeing as it's just you and me and we're not going to be disturbed again, why don't we relax? Have a nice, quiet drink. Calm your nerves. Again and keep on trying. One of our cars is off the air, sir. Been trying to raise it for 15 minutes or more. Maybe it's probably packed up. How long since you were on the car, Sergeant? Six years. What did you do when your radio packed up? Find a phone and call in. What's the number of the car? Echo 47. Roving patrol? Yeah, it could be anywhere. Could be anywhere in that area, Sergeant. Now alert all units. Cars in my garden's got green fly. Being good with my hands isn't enough.
knees. I need scissors or something to cut with. Screwdriver. Bits and pieces. Perhaps I can find something like that around here, eh? You sure you won't join me? Uh, no, I, I, I won't, but you go ahead. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, you're too clever, Doctor. Oh, but then again, you're a specialist, aren't you? We never did get that sorted out. Exactly what kind of a specialist are you? I'm a heart surgeon. Oh. I thought all specialists were referred to as Mr. Well, it's optional. Ah, optional. Some consultants prefer to be called doctor. Sort of, uh, humble in reverse, eh? Well, don't worry about me, Mr. Doctor. I won't get drunk. Oh, and, uh, I have been referred to as heartless. <laughs> Look, I told you not to make any noise. Get off. Come here. Get off. Feldman. Feldman, get off. I didn't touch her. I swear I didn't touch her. She just went crazy. I told you to fix that radio. Look, I was. I was looking for some scissors. In there. In there. When she went mad. Get her back on the bed. Give you, him. give him a hand. You go, you really go, don't you, Doc? Hey? What is in here, then? Just old clothes. Oh, just old clothes. Give us a key. I don't know where it is. Well, that's no problem. <laughs> Never seen her before, you've got to believe me. Well, whoever she is, she looks as though she's here to stay. So you, I've got to get rid of her, haven't you? Dr. Hanson? Okay. Tracy Loxton. I'm sorry I'm a little late, but there are roadblocks all the way. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I... I have an appointment. And you're expecting me. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not making myself very clear. I guess she forgot to tell you about it. She? Your wife. I arranged it with her. My wife? We're a collection of posters. Oh. What a collection. Uh, Miss Loxton, um, 
I'm terribly, I'm terribly sorry, but my wife isn't here. It's quite unlike her to overlook something like this. She even neglected to tell me about it, but she's away and, and will be for some days. I'm so sorry. Uh, perhaps you'll let me call you a taxi. But I can't go. I'm sorry, Dr. Henson. I know it's presumptuous of me, but I've already arranged for my boyfriend to pick me up here. That's why I let the cab go. The boyfriend? Well, yes, he's somewhere on the road between here and Cornwall. I've no hope of contacting him. He's expecting to meet me here later. How much later? Well, I counted on the interview lasting at least two hours. We should be here around four o'clock. Look, my time doesn't have to be entirely wasted. At least you can let me see the collection. You must know something about them. Uh, Miss Lockstock, I'm terribly sorry, but it's quite impossible oh, for you to me, stay sir. here. Should I, uh, beg pardon, sir. Should I make the tea, sir? What? Or perhaps the young lady would prefer a drink, sir. I'm sure that Madam would not wish us to be inhospitable, sir. Um, no, no, of course not. Um... Thank you. A drink would be fine. This way, please, miss. Sir? Sherry or whiskey, miss? Um, Sherry would be fine, thank you. Uh, do please sit down, Miss Miss Lockstrom. <clears throat> Am I drinking alone? Oh. Big pardon, sir. Would you care to join the young lady? Uh, yes, I think perhaps I will. Um, Scotch, please, Garrard. Oh, this must be the original. I've seen photographs of this before, but never a real print. And this one, too. You know, the last time I saw this, it was in a Washington museum, and it was only a reproduction. Sir? Thank you. I must confess I was half expecting this trip to be a waste of time, but just the posters in this room alone make it worthwhile. Excuse me, miss. Your, uh, your gentleman friend, will he be arriving alone, miss? I was uh, merely thinking, should you decide to stay for dinner, I would like to be forewarned. Oh, there's no telling how many people Derek may show up with. But don't worry, we wouldn't be able to stay for a meal anyway. We have to get back to town. You've forgotten the soda. I do beg your pardon, sir. That's not like me at all, sir. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sir. Yes, I think there are going to be some widows and orphans before we finish with this one. I just know it. Yeah, it's written all over him. A killer. Not just a bully boy either. No, he's cold. No nerves. Yes, we trained him very well, didn't we? Didn't you know, Sergeant? It's all in here if you read back far enough. He's ex army. Crack paratroop regiment. The state trained him, and now he's an enemy of the state. It's ironical, isn't it? Right, get on to the local army unit. Tell them we'd like their help to recover one of their own. Radio all units. I want total mobility, a sweeping search. We don't want anybody just sitting around waiting. Five years ago, I had to go to the Far East, to Malaya, to pick up an embezzler. Picked up a massive dose of malaria instead. Just catches up on me sometimes. 
Inconvenient. Yes. But I'm all right. I wouldn't be on the force if I wasn't. Just catches up on me sometimes. Ah. See, it's beginning to work already. I'm not an invalid. You won't have to pull any punches on my account. Thank you. I remember that. recent photograph of your wife I could borrow. It's something I'd like to feature in the magazine. Is this her? <coughs> no, that's my sister. Uh, I, I don't think I do have a recent, uh, recent photograph of her, but I'm sure she'll be very pleased to send one on to you later. If she were here, we could get our own against the posters. Derek's going to have to take a few of these anyway. Oh, don't worry. The magazine will arrange for copyright clearance. You mean that when your boyfriend arrives here, he'll be staying? Well, only for as long as it takes to get the right pictures. We'll probably want one of you as well. American readers just love English butlers. Have I said something wrong? Oh, excuse me, Sarah. Must have left the radio on in my room. If you'll excuse me for a moment. Dr. Henson, I'm very sorry. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, miss. I wonder if I might just have a quick word with you, sir. Uh, yes, of course. Please excuse me. I suppose you thought that was very funny. Using my name in front of her. Well, you do that again and it will be the very last sound you ever hear. Oh, get upstairs, go on. If you just have a quick look, sir. Down, we've got a visitor. You didn't get rid of her. Her boyfriend is picking her up later. And that is all right with me. You understand that, Doc? She walks out of here none the wiser, and maybe, just maybe, you and your wife have a chance. Well, why didn't you just grab her? And the boyfriend, too? When he arrives? That's too many to keep an eye on. That's too many missing. There must be people who knew she was coming here. She disappears and the finger starts pointing at this place, and this place is clean so far, and that's the way it stays. Have you got me, Doc? Did you fix that radio, then? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, let's hear it working. Let's hear what they're saying about us. Find that car soon. They'll know we're around and here. And when she leaves here with her boyfriend, they'll give this place a clean bill of health. And sooner or later, they'll start looking somewhere else. Oh, that's great. I'm very glad you think so. Downstairs, Doc. 
Look, I don't care what you do. I just want you out of here as soon as possible. Just as soon as things cool down. And the radio will tell us that. Hasn't cooled down yet. They will. I've just told you. Sooner or later, they will start looking somewhere else. Now, come on. She's been on her own down there long enough. There you are. This must be the gem of the whole collect collection. Yes, my wife, um, she spent um, she spent many years trying to track it down, and oddly enough, she ran it down just a mile away from here. Sheer coincidence. I'll get you another drink, miss. I haven't finished this one yet. Now, listen, that car must be fun. How big is this radius, Sergeant? Excuse me. What's that, sir? How big is this radius? About ten miles, sir. Well, that should be big enough. Well, all you must continue to search for echo form server and report back on the I know, Inspector. Some of your best men are tied up. Well, if you want to complain about it, you'll have to go to the Chief Constable. I already have. That car must be somewhere. Sir. He agrees with my assessment of the situation. He agrees that you're being just a bit too zealous. Too obsessional. I'm to recall all units at six. One hour from now. Thank you, Inspector. Hello? I could do with some coffee. Yeah, yeah. Whoever set us off chasing rainbows has to be crazy. Nothing at all. Oh, uh, sorry, sir. That's all right, sir. We probably are chasing rainbows. Yeah. Coffee's in the radio room. Yeah. Obsessional, eh? So nothing for me, 47. Echo 47? That's Jackie Jones and Alfred Dunstan, sir. They're good men. They're deaf men, or stupid. How long has their radio been off the air? Oh, they're good men, sir. What's their last position? The Spearberry area. Spearberry? I oh, just checked Spearberry. There's nothing. An old lady had lost her cat. Oh, and Dr. Henson's kids having a screaming party. Nothing. Henson? Yeah. What kids? Very noisy ones. I didn't see them, but they were yelling out upstairs. Dr. Hanson hasn't got any kids. Well, come on, son. Come on, mate. Attention all units. Proceed towards junction A7 in Spearbury area. Attention all units. Proceed towards junction A7. Superintendent Brook to HQ. Brook to HQ. HQ. Call off the Spearberry operation. Repeat, call off the Spearberry Sp operation. Garrard and Filton have been positively identified as being in the Dover area. Repeat, they are in the Dover area. Recall all local units. Repeat, call off all units. Search to be concentrated in the Dover area. 1025. 1025. I knew I was right. We've wasted all those men, all that time, for nothing. Well, it's out of our hands now. They've taken the radio. They think we're in Dover. Oh, uh, that will be the gardener, sir. He wanted a quick word with you before he left. Hey, 
call off the search. Get away from her. I just heard it. Listen for yourself. Repeat to all units. Disperse search concentration around Spearbury. Garrod and Filton positive. <laughs> it worked, Garrod. We can get out of here now. Not yet. Hey? It'll take some time to get all those cars out of the way. We'll be going. Later. There seems to be a last minute development, sir. May I call you back? Uh, no, no, sir. Just an unconfirmed report, but we have to check everything out, don't we, sir? Yes, sir. Spearbury? Yeah, definitely, sir. They've also killed a couple of our men. Jones and Dunstan. Your gentleman friend should be arriving soon, miss. Derek isn't exactly famous for his punctuality. They've conned her. The American girl. She's expecting company. Boyfriend, Derek. Well, they don't know it yet, but they're all expecting company. I want six men, plain clothes, armed. And Sergeant, just make sure they all know how to use a gun, eh? Sir, Alf and Jackie Jones, they were friends of mine. And Gerard and Filton are expecting the boyfriend. The Matisse is actually signed on the back as well. It must be worth a lot of money. Yes, I, I imagine it is. And uh, this one over here is really quite attractive. Don't you find? You don't agree? Yes, I, I do agree. Would you care for a drink, Miss Oh, Hello, Lisa. Whole collection's beautiful, Doctor. I think the Matisse is my favorite, but... Oh, that must be Derek. I didn't hear a car, miss. Only one way to find out. Hi. Derek couldn't make it, sent me instead. Oh, hi. And a police offering. Well, Miss Luxton, I expect you'll be on your way. Um, I hope you'll use your discretion about revealing our address. With this collection, we don't want to be burgled, do we? I understand. It was very nice meeting you, Doctor, and I'm just... Hold it! He's a cop! Stand still, Felton! All right, Gerard, leave it. This is the end of the road. Right kneecap first, then the left, and you tumble right down into my arms. Do you want to tumble, or do you want to walk? Richard. He killed two cops, didn't he? Two friends of mine. That wasn't me! That was Garrard! Shut up! I'm waiting. I'm coming down. Don't shoot. Oh, it was Garrard. He killed him. Oh, no! Ah! That's nice, isn't it? And thieves fall out. Thieves and murderers. My wife. I knew you hadn't slipped the net. Sergeant, I'd like the personal satisfaction of telling the Chief Constable about this, and the Inspector. Oh, my God. My wife. She's dead. She's dead. And you killed her! Are you sure she's dead? Because I'm sure I'm a doctor. Upstairs, Trichet. Get these two into the van. 
Dr. Henson. Why don't you come back with us and let perhaps the police doctor have a look at you? Uh, yes, of course, but I, I, I'd rather like to be left alone for a little while, if you don't mind. Uh, I'll, I'll come along later. All right. Where's the American girl, sir? Uh, she's gone. Hey? Eh? Well, she left a few moments ago. She must have walked right past you. Well, we'd better find her, hadn't we? She's a material witness. Uh, well, I've no doubt she'll contact you after she's seen her employer. Miss Loxton is a journalist, and uh, I imagine what she's seen here would make good copy. Put a call out. We want to brought in straight away. Right, sir. Well, perhaps you would come along and make a statement when you feel up to it, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, of course. I... <laughs> fortune all the way. Then one terrible stroke of bad luck. I mean, if she hadn't seen you upstairs, she'd have been none the wiser. Or, or if she hadn't seen the body. But unfortunately, she saw both. And when she wakes up? Oh, she... She isn't going to wake up. Off. Haven't you done enough? That's not the same woman. Oh, come on. That's not Mrs. Henson. Film, you saw just now. It's over, Garrard. But it's not the same woman. We're not going to talk our way out of this one. That's sound advice. It's not her, I tell you. This one has dark hair. Film, will you look? That's right. Give me trouble. I'd like that. No. No. Yes. No. Yes, no. we must. We must. <laughs> It wasn't her. 
It wasn't her. Different woman entirely. We're building up a tricky little defence, aren't we? Oh, do leave off. What have I got to lose? The dead woman is not Mrs. Henson. Sergeant, you did see her, didn't you? Yes, Mrs. Henson. It's right. not her! Look, laddie, I knew Mrs. Henson! That's her. They're laying out on the morgue slab right now. All right. What about the other woman, then? What other woman? Pretty. Long, blonde hair. The one that Henson said was his wife. Who's that, then? We have no alternative. Look, I, we, murdered my wife and got away with it. Now, when we did that, there was still an element of risk. I mean, all right, I can try the symptoms of a heart attack, but there was always the risk of some nosy pathologist probing too far. Now, those two thugs have eliminated that risk. No one will ever question that she died because of them. No one will ever know that she was already dead when they arrived here. But I'm not prescribing any more pills for you. You drink this. Another killing. If we have to, then we'll be completely clear. How? Exactly the same plan we had for Elizabeth, but didn't have to use a painless injection. She won't feel a thing, I promise you. And later, when it's dark, we'll take her far away from here. She'll be found somewhere, and the, the verdict will be heart seizure. Then it'll be all over. All right? Good. Now go and get my bag. There's a good girl. Pinchel go on your record. You did well. You don't look well. Pained. Well, that's how I look when I'm thinking. Well, we'll give it up. It doesn't look good on you. What are you thinking about, anyway? That's the trouble. I can't remember. <laughs> Been a long, hard day. Come on, I'll finish the charge teeth. You go and buy yourself a drink. It's funny how Garrard kept on insisting about it being a different woman. Garrard's crafty. He's got something up his sleeve. Yes, convincing, though. Have to be very convincing on this one. Murdered two of our fellows, terrorized a family. Not to mention one of our cousins from across the Atlantic. Well, that's it. Okay. The American girl, Tracy Longston. Well, the superintendent told me to find her and bring her in. And I've been putting out bulletins. Oh, well, that's the usual procedure. But I don't have to. She's going back to the house. Why? Two reasons. Her boyfriend's picking her up there. And, I remember now, her suitcase was still in the hall. Nasty fall, my dear. Don't worry. I'm taking good care of you. Just a little injection, and you'll wake up feeling so much better. Thank you. Wait a minute. I didn't fall. You hit me. Hold her. Hold her! I know there are new medical techniques these days, Doctor, but I never heard of this one before. She was hysterical. I, I was giving her a sedative. Oh, for God's sake, can't you see it's over? Yes, I rather think it is. Are you all right, miss? Why don't you answer it? I'm sorry to say it's probably your real boyfriend this time. <laughs> 